everyone, welcome along to Sports Bits. A brand new week for, of course, a great conversation as far as all the biggest sporting topics are involved, especially off the back of what has been an interesting week in the Premier League. Some Syria action as well. We'll also touch base with some boxing stories, which, of course, involves one of the greats uh, of the game in Nigeria. And also, we'll touch base with uh, what happened on the continent as far as the CAF Confederations Cup games go. Uh, Rivers United being involved in some action there. What about NPFL uh, match day seven? We'll touch base with that. So there's lots to look forward to here on the show. Be a part of it as well on social media sports based on all social media platforms and of course you can also uh, continue to follow our channels as well we're going to take a break now when we come back we'll get into sports pizza welcome along to the show Welcome back to Sports Pizza, uh, and of course, it's great to have uh, Fala Nadini as always. Great to have you here because, look, every time we uh, get together, it's always a great chat with uh, the guys here. And uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, you're welcome along to Sports Pizza. My name is Yubi Nso Nduono Vid. It's good to have you here. Uh, great weekend of football. I mean, we saw all the ac action from the uh, CAF to uh, the Premier League to the Syria, and of course, we uh, saw an early story uh, from the boxing scenes. But first things first, you well? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's Nigeria, but we are. COVID. Yep, uh, everything as far as, uh, you know, Nairos Casti and all that stuff is uh, quite the uh, hustle. But um, notwithstanding, let's talk some uh, football. Let's start off with uh, the story uh, with Rivers United, who were out on the continent to represent uh, Nigeria as one of the uh, teams uh, out there in the CAF Confederations Cup. Talk to me about their trip to Congo, Brazzaville, uh, to take on uh, Diablis uh, Noah's. Three goals to nil was the final scoreline. It's quite disappointing, especially when you're... Uh, competing as defending champions and you know Diablis knows they're not they're not the biggest name on the continent with all sure, due respects sure, to them sure. so a bit of a letdown there from um, Stanley Gumas man isn't it yeah a bit of a letdown but then again uh, this is what we've been experiencing with Nigeria teams on the continent for the past two three seasons I mean we had four representatives two in the Confederation Cup and two in the Champions League but I mean they couldn't make it past the group stage except for Rivers United had to drop back into the CAF Professional Cup and their first game with not going away from home in African football it's always a difficult thing but <clears throat> we're not expecting I mean it to be that that was no yes. disrespect to the team from Congo but uh, well it's still match they won they have maybe not the comfort of home game yeah. they're not going to be playing on their home ground but at the next of champion whenever they're playing at home but um, we expect them to, to still pull through out of the group mm. you've lost your first game that doesn't mean that you're out of the tournament yeah. you still have five games to play so I'm expecting Rivers United to, to still pull through but what we saw over the weekend was just it was far from good enough yeah it was far from good enough but so, yeah. it's something that, that has always been happening with our club size yeah. when you go on the continent for the past two three seasons yeah talk to me about um, this uh, squabble between uh, Rivers United uh, the state, state, uh, state FA and uh, the NFF not being, um, they're basically saying, you know, you did not represent us well, allowing CAF to move our home games from, you know, the uh, Amesiamaka uh, Stadium in uh, Rivers to uh, the Nest of Champions. What is that about? And can that have a big factor in them qualifying from the group, knowing they're not playing at home at home? Of course, it's Nigeria, but your home ground is your home ground. Let's, let's, not, let's not mistake yeah, that. Yeah, your, your home ground is your home ground. I remember when Aimba won the first or maybe the second CAF Champions League. They, they played at the Abuja, at Abuja Stadium, and that did not do anything to their chance of, I mean, they won that Champions League last season. Mm. And so, maybe CAF, they, they've done their own inspection and feel that, okay, this stadium is not fit enough to host a continental game. That is why they have decided to move it to the nest of champion. And uh, there's nothing NFF can do because whatever whatever NFF do, uh, feel that they can do, whatever what they put in, CAF still has the final decision. And they've made that decision that, hey, you guys cannot play at home, but if you're going to be playing home game in Nigeria, then you have to play as the nest of champion. And I don't think Rivers United should have any complaints. I mean, we've seen countries not playing on their own ground because... Uh, security reasons, or they don't have a, a good stadium, you know, to cap standard. And of course, Morocco is always ready to host countries that can't yeah. play on their own ground. So it's not something that is new. Uh, I think, but then again, they're still playing in Nigeria. So yeah. that, should, that should play at the back of the mind of the player that we're still playing our own game in well, Nigeria. Well, of course, you remember uh, CAF, uh, the final, the CAF Confederations Cup final uh, last season was actually played. Uh, at the nest of champions and it was uh, quite the uh, spectacle to watch and of course uh, lots to look forward to as far as that goes developing story we'll keep an eye on that let's uh, touch base immediately with uh, other teams in the NPFL match day 7 uh, saw some
some incredible games. Talk to me about that because uh, we've seen Bender Insurance uh, slow down a little bit. Uh, two to draw away from home against shooting stars is not a bad result. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, what makes uh, this uh, raise the eyebrows because Gombe came uh, to their stadium, uh, you know, in Edo State and drew there. So back to back draws for Bender Insurance. And of course, uh, it still means they're top of the table in uh, Group A of their Bridge League format, 17 points. Any worries or it's just, I mean, they've set the standards too high for themselves? Well, it's uh, if there's, if there's any worry for Bernard Shura, I see that it's like a Yimba at our picking points right now. And right. Just like I said, going away from home in the Nigerian League and picking points, even if you get a draw, it's something that, uh, that, that is commendable. But now getting they haven't the lost the game all season still. Yeah, they have not lost the game all season, but uh, the danger of drawing games is that uh, you but I think you're getting the point. You're getting the point. But the opponent, they are, they but are of course, you're getting a point. point. Yeah, but then again, you, you've lost two points. You know, the last two games, they've lost four points, gained two points. But I never have managed to get six points you know, from the last two games. So we never have been able to cut the lead of Brenda Insurance uh, to, I think, to a point or two. They, they, yeah, they four points gap, actually. And have over four, four point gap. And uh, they, they're gradually closing in. But then again, they're, they're still unbeaten, and, and I think that that is something that they will give other teams, you know, a concern yeah. in the league. And I, I, I think apart from the game against Gombe United, they yeah. scored two goals a, a, a away from home, so that's something that Brendan should, should be should be happy about. But the chasing part really need to do a lot. Talking yeah. about uh, Aqua United, uh, Yemba, and of course uh, Red Monsters, who also draw points yeah. uh, to, uh, over the weekend. Matter of fact, uh, the first uh, six teams in uh, the Group A of the Abridged League format did not drop, uh, did not uh, you know uh, lose any games. So it's a bit of a, a very stiff competition there in that regard. Talk to me about um, you know uh, Aqua United, who managed to get a draw away from home as well at uh, Maiduguri. I mean, that's a that's a tough place to travel to, let alone pick up any points. Um, El Canimo Warriors 1-1 one, one was the final score there. It's going to be really tough, you know, to qualify from Group A. It looks like this is where the real battle is. It's not as competitive in the Group B where you've got like the so Louis Stars, you know, Abia Warriors, Bielsa United and Sunshine Stars. So Group A is certainly where, you know, the big hitters are. There are six sure. champions, six sure. previous champions sure. in that Group A. Mm. And in, when the draws for, for the, for the Abridge League came out, well, like a bit of imbalance, you know, uh, in, in, in the in the parents. When you look at the group, you have, you have big teams. You know, not disrespect to the teams in group, but yeah. uh, they, they probably they should have they should have taken maybe a Yimba or Remo Stars and put in in, in, in the group. B. Maybe be, that, that would have made the group a bit more competitive. But it's like all, all eyes now focus on the group A. Yeah. And uh, uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Early signs. He's telling us that Ben and Shorts are going to qualify yeah. for the playoffs. So who is going to join them? We thought Red Monsters were going to be uh, the second team, you know, to qualify from that. But yeah. Red Monsters now they are not they are not picking points. So it's it's still open. But I think my my, my bet is on Ben and Shorts to qualify from the. Well, of course, uh, uh, seven games played, uh, 11 more to go uh, for all the teams across the NPFL divisions. Of course, uh, Rivers United, who are defending champions, were not in action off the back of uh, being involved in some continental assignments. Uh, what about uh, Lobby Stars, who currently top the table uh, in the Group B? They've got 16 points, and of course, they're coasting at the moment. Uh, Abia Warriors, as well, have got, uh, have got uh, 14, 13 points, I beg your pardon, and are currently a second. Uh, Rivers United in third, and they lost their last game, if you uh, must know, to uh, Doma United. Let's pick up the pace now, get away from all of that uh, the local story and get on to another uh, local lad who is international nowadays. Let's touch base with uh, that boxing story which uh, broke last week. April 1st is the date that's been set for Anthony Joshua to uh, fight uh, German and um, German Franklin. Look, he's not the biggest name in the game, but he's been touted as one of the potential greats uh, got beat by Dillian White last year in November so there's a bit of a lower expectation for him but for AJ it's always the maximum expectation from him he's got to go win and he's got to win convincingly because this is not quite his level you know I mean 2022 we're looking at 2035 between AJ and um the, 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 the guy from it, his fellow British, you know, yeah, Tyson Fury, uh, Tyson Fury. But uh, things have changed right now, and of course, he's, 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 asking, he's having to battle with that with Franklin. He needs to um, to go back to and, basics, to basics, you know, and win games to climb up the ranking before he can actually have a shot at maybe AJ, uh, maybe uh, Tyson Fury or, or Usyk or, or, or Dylan White, or even even Dante Wilder. I mean, that, that's the story of AJ these days. And I, I hope it, it, it on the first of April doesn't turn out to be April Fool for Nigerians that <laughs> are expecting AJ to, to win that 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 bout. Huh? Franklin is not a big name compared to AJ with the world of boxing. So everyone 
is, is expecting AJ to win this this particular one. Uh, same way you expected him to beat Usyk. Yeah. That that didn't turn out well. But I'm um, I'm looking at AJ winning. I'm maybe putting a smile on Nigeria again. Who have been let down by his defeat to uh, to Ukraine? I'm talking about Usyk. So. Everything is pointing towards the direction, and he also changed. He has changed his trainer. Yeah, he has changed his trainer. So maybe he's trying to. So maybe going back to basics yeah, and going back to that and see what he can actually do differently from what he did in the last two fights that he had against Usyk. So yeah. we're expecting AJ to beat Franklin. Not disrespect to Franklin, but yeah. no, he is not on the same level with AJ. Mm. So AJ should be able to take this one. Well, of course, uh, Anthony Joshua, uh, one of the uh, international uh, athletes who's brought lots of uh, interesting uh, times to Nigerians, uh, sports lovers. And, of course, we would be keeping an eye on everything involving Anthony Joshua uh, going into that massive fight a couple of months away. But, yes, we are certainly uh, looking forward to that uh, in full swing. Let's get away from that now. Let's get back to football, interestingly, on uh, the European scenes. And where better to start with uh, than Real Madrid, who are now uh, club world champions. It is almost a given in the last couple of years, uh, Nii, that um, the team that wins the Champions League in Europe goes on to win the club World Cup. We saw uh, a couple of African teams there. We saw Widad uh, in, the, in the tournament early on. He got knocked out. I think we saw Al Hilal as well. Uh, Al Hali, I beg your pardon. Yeah, uh, got knocked out by Real Madrid. Then, of course, couldn't go on to win the third place. So, a bit of a shame in that regard for from the African point of view. But Real Madrid, was, was no, there was no doubt entirely. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I, I think except for Chelsea in 20... Yeah, I think that that don't win the club world cup. But every other European team, you are expected to going win, to win it. Uh, win, win the club world cup. Uh, it it shows the gulf in class between Europe and other continents. You know, when it comes to football, I think the closest uh, that the only thing that can actually push the Europeans uh, yeah. is the South Americans. Uh, but then again, uh, uh, somehow, somehow, Flamengo lost in you know, the semi final to yeah. Arsenal. And uh, but Real Madrid proved a bit uh, too much, you know, for, for them. Even though they considered a lot of goal, which uh, it's something that I can't understand with Real Madrid currently right now. Yeah. they are not playing very well. But then again, their class was just too much for 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 the for the other teams in, in the competition. So congratulations to them. Carlo Ancelotti getting his hand with another trophy again as Real Madrid manager. Maybe just maybe that's what they need to kickstart their season. Yeah, Real Madrid fans will always tell you that they have bigger fish to fry. Which is the UEFA Champions League, and maybe just maybe the club up is what the players need you know, yeah. to, to win to defend the Champions League. You don't want to bet against Real Madrid, yeah. Defending the Champions League. I saw a story that uh, Ronaldo just looking at the final, thinking he chose the wrong. Uh, chose the wrong Saudi Arabian <laughs> club but of course it's been a, a nice time for uh, Saudi Arabian football especially off the back of that uh, massive Cristiano uh, Ronaldo signing he's now of course uh, scored a hat-trick in the last game matter of fact scored four goals in uh, the last game they played so a bit of a nice uh, spotlight on um, Saudi Arabian uh, football but speaking of Real Madrid let's touch base with Carl Ancelotti who uh, last week late last week actually uh, got announced uh, he would be taking over the Brazilian national team in the summer now, that is quite the, uh, the step up because, you know, there's Real Madrid in club football who are the apex club, if you want to put it that way. Then there is Real, then there's Brazil, which, in my opinion, I'm not sure you agree, but it is the biggest job in you yeah, know, national team football as definitely. well. So, I mean, this is a man that's made for the pressure cooker, for sure. He likes the big job. He likes the big task. But how does that affect their season? Does it affect it, if at all? No, no. I'm not, I think that is why... Um they they've not officially announced that he will be taking over. Mm. You know, probably out of respect, I allowed the man to finish his job. And he has even come out to debunk that story that mm. uh, I won't be taking over as Brazil coach. That he has a contract with Real Madrid. But I mean, when Real Madrid, when Brazil comes calling, and you know, just like you said, the yeah. biggest, you know, Joshua Real Madrid are the biggest when it comes to club football. You, you can't say no to Brazil. And let, let's see what he can do. Making that move from club football to to um, international to football. International football is. Something that is strange, you know. Well, well, I've he, not seen him do that. I mean, I mean, to be fair to him, to 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 give the story some credits. Obviously, the story is not officially announced, but he did he didn't mention last season that you know he would like to finish off at Real Madrid. So um, it, it kind of made sense that he would move on to something, mm -hmm. um, you know, outside club football entirely. But of course, that's a, a developing story, and of course, we've heard names like Jose Mourinho also uh, being mentioned with the Brazilian national team. So uh, keep an eye on Brazil. Uh, the wait for an international tournament uh, continues. 
uh, for Brazil. World Cup, to be precise, because they've won uh, the Copa America on a couple occasions. Let's uh, get away uh, from that now. Let's touch base in Spain, because uh, this week uh, sees uh, some Champions League football. Of course, Real Madrid are in action as well. So uh, expect them to uh, bring in some interesting uh, games. There. Uh, Barcelona uh, won uh, last uh, a couple of days as well. They put together a nice couple of runs. And interestingly, they played Manchester United in the Europa League playoff uh, on Thursday. And when you think about that, right, and the form they've been in, if you just suppose that with United, who have not quite been firing on all cylinders, you know, of course, no thanks to injuries to Casemiro, um, not red cards to Casemiro, and of course, um, injuries to Christian Eriksen and some key players there. You feel like it's more balanced now than when the draws were made back, sure, you know, sure, in in December. Sure, yeah, and Barcelona they are firing on us later. Not considered goals also, uh, by the way. I mean, I've seen some uh, Barcelona fans and playing some really good football. Yeah, make a joke at Real Madrid that you signed Rodrigo, you signed Christensen, who got a better deal at the end of the day. Yeah, and it's looking like Barcelona are a formidable team right now. And when you look at Barcelona versus Manchester United. Against each other, you probably think this is a Champions League game. Yeah. Or, I mean, it's happening in the UEFA Europa League. One of them will get knocked out at the end of the day. For sure. And I'm very sure their fans will probably expect uh, their team to get knocked out so they can focus more on the league. But uh, regardless, I think Barcelona are running away with the league mm. uh, right now. But Manchester United, I don't know if their fans will want the clubs to continue in the UEFA Europa League or they should just focus on making yeah. it in the top form or even even a title challenge yeah that, but that is left to be seen but it's going to be an entertaining game from both teams well of course uh, uh match united uh, versus barcelona uh, uh looking forward to that in the europa league when we come back we'll touch base with the round of 16 games in the champions league because guess what it's back and of course there's lots to look forward to come february Welcome back to Sports Pizza, and boy, are we excited to have uh, the Champions League back uh, this week. And what a uh, stats packed and, of course, a, a superstar packed action week for uh, football. We just touched base with Barcelona, who are, of course, albeit in the lower tier of European football. Let's touch base with Real Madrid against Liverpool. Those are two teams that are not quite, you know, firing on all cylinders. Liverpool really struggling, must be said. But, I mean, how many times have we in the past seen Real Madrid, you know, or Liverpool, beg your pardon, you know, really turn the style in Europe? They're really big European football club, but Real Madrid defending champions, there's a lot to give in that game, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and the good thing for Liverpool fans is that most of their players are getting back, you know, to fitness. Uh, Diogo Jota is Yeah, back. that must be really uh, nice. Really, really nice, and because Gakpo and, uh, and Davo Nunes can't, can't find their scoring boot right now, and uh, Salah is also not firing or something like that. I think, uh, just like you said, the Champions League is a different ball game entirely. Yeah. But then again, they are facing the Real Madrid, who also, just like I said earlier on, they have the bigger fish to fry, which is the UEFA Champions League. Yeah. So, but I think looking at both teams and how they've played this season, I want to put my money on Real Madrid mm. to get past Liverpool mm. in this particular round. First game against uh, uh, Liverpool versus Real Madrid at Anfield, and that would be quite the game. What about uh, what happens with uh, PSG and Bayern Munich? That is the <laughs> tie of the round of 16. Now, of course, uh, when that tie was made, you, you got the sense that, you know, I mean, depending on what happens in the World Cup, um, you know, one of Lionel Messi or uh, Kylian Mbappe would be happy or, uh, or unhappy. But it feels like, you know, they haven't quite come back to the same level. Of course, Messi is scoring some incredible goals. But for Bayern Munich, you know, they, they need to kick on now. You know, they signed some, some players in the summer and you feel like that's an even tie, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Sure, it's an even tie, but injuries to Paris and the other team are uh, still in this game in favor of Bayern with Bayern Munich because uh, Lionel Messi is out in job, Kylian Mbappe is also out in job, and the supporting cast for Neymar. Even though the Bayern Munich really team say that it's a bit of a lie that Kylian Mbappe is injured, <laughs> they, they, get, they get the feeling that there's yeah, a bit they, of a they, trick. Yeah, they, they might see him play, but uh, he, he hasn't played for a couple of weeks right now. Lionel Messi missed the last game uh, that they played against AS Monaco and they lost that one but Neymar is back you know from injury so yeah. maybe just maybe this is the time for other players in the team the likes of Fabian Ruiz Renato Sanchez you know to show uh, the stuff they, they, they are made of and uh, maybe just maybe but then again because of the injuries to Paris and Germany uh, this, this is also looking like a game that, that Bayern, Bayern could win, yeah, yeah. Should, should, should win and of course the first leg comes at the Park of Prince, uh, uh to at the home of uh, Paris and Germain. Uh, what about another uh, big game to look forward to? Well, you've got to talk about Chelsea and Dortmund because, look, and traditionally you say Chelsea should beat Dortmund, but Chelsea have not quite been firing. And I've heard some people say that, you know, Graham Porter is maybe 
on his last legs there, which is a bit of a change in um, ideology from you know what we spoke about a couple of weeks ago. But Dortmund are not doing too badly themselves, and it looks as if though that would be a very interesting game to yeah, look forward to. Ever since we came back from the World Cup break, Dortmund they've been firing, and they won their last game away from home to yeah. not in, uh, against World of Bremen. We've seen Chelsea struggle I mean, in the past in the league and the goal to win the Champions League. 2012 mm. is a case study, 2021 is also a case study, you know, struggling in the league and winning the Champions League. Without happening again this season, that is left to be seen. But Chelsea fans, I, I think, I have this feeling that they want Grand Potter to leave the club. Right. Because they, they feel they can't cook with the players they have. One thing's for sure, though, um, the, the shortest route to the Champions League next season is to win it this year. So uh, I see Chelsea fans, you know, making parallels to the previous uh, season. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. Uh, what about uh, Napoli away at uh, Frankfurt in Germany? Uh, Victor Simen, how many goals has he got now? 17 in the league in 18 games. And how many points gap now? Look, this this guys are on fire. Are they the best best team in Europe at the moment? I, I think they're the best team in Europe right now, followed by Barcelona. I mean, Arsenal a couple of weeks back, where well, I mean, in, in that mix, but they've dropped points in the last two games. So right, they cannot drop points. They just can't drop points. And um, it's it's the sad thing that they're playing against Frankfurt because Frankfurt has definitely got to get whooped. I'm very sure of that. You can't yeah. you can't bet against Victor Simeon. No score. You don't yeah. want to do that. You yeah. don't want to do that. You get the sense that if you're a betting man, he's one of the uh, surest bets uh, on right the market right right at the moment. Right and that's a great thing there. And what about uh, Erling Haaland, who's uh, we hear might not be available uh, for uh, Man City. And of course, there's a uh, lot to look forward to as far as the uh, uh, stats uh, and action packed uh, week, midweek goes for uh, some European football. And it's great to have a Champions League back, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Uh, great stuff there. I'm just going to ask you, I mean, it's still far away, but who's going to win the Champions League this season? Real Madrid, Liverpool... You know, Bayern Munich, PSG. I, I'm looking at Bayern Munich winning, winning the Champions League. This right. Season. Great stuff then. Well, trust you enjoyed uh, Sports uh, Pizza Moment of the Week. Well, you can be sure to follow us on social media across all social media platforms. Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, of course, Sports Pizza is the handle. And also, you can send us an email uh, if you have uh, some uh, comments to make. And of course, if you uh, wish to be a part of the show's uh, sponsorship formats, we'll be delighted to read those emails and uh, reply back to you. Uh, Follow Nadi, always a pleasure to talk to you. And of course, the return to Champions League Definitely. is incredible. And hopefully next week, we'll touch base with all uh, the results then. Yeah? Uh, great stuff. My name is Yubi, and so I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of Sports Pizza. We'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.